our last episode of season one go and watch it because we kind of wrapped everything up mm -hmm. in that episode but now it's time to move on we in season two and we need to hear from you guys so please 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 whether it's on our instagram whether you tell us you know us personally you tell us what you want to hear mm -hmm. comment on our youtube share it like subscribe don't wait until we blow up okay to support yeah for real all right. Don't wait until I'm on that know for sure couch. Literally. Okay. Telling them what I know for sure. Period. Anyways, like, I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to help y'all out. I'm, try I'm really trying to help y'all out. <laughs> trying to help y'all out. So, yes, please like, comment, subscribe, share. It takes nothing to do that. We would appreciate it. So, I don't know if y'all can tell by the title or by the thumbnail, but today we're going to be talking about the new show on Hulu called Unprisoned. Unprisoned. Chad, it is a good, that is a really good show. show. Like, really I feel really like show. everyone should watch it. Whether it's something like whether the storyline is something that you can relate to or right. not, I definitely think that it's something that everybody should watch because, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that you know, it's a lot of people that go through that, and even if you're not the person going through it, it's like you could probably learn something. So maybe somebody in your life is somebody that's going through it. So you know how to operate with them. You know how to move with them. Right. Like that. Right. Exactly. Um, I was going to say the same thing. Just because you aren't going through it, you may know somebody that is. And there's so many different things that you could get out of that show yeah. that you may really be able to relate to. Mm -hmm. So I really think people should watch this show. Yes. So before we get into it, I do want to say that if you're not a fan of spoilers... I would be careful watching this episode. We're going to try yeah. not to spoil it. We're going to try. Um, I definitely don't want to spoil the end. That's one that I want to keep. Mm -hmm. And we we not tell you guys what happened at the end. But there might be some things here and there um, that we talk about that might be like a spoiler. So mm -hmm. that's number one. Um, and then just basically the gist of the show is Carrie Washington mm -hmm. plays girl. a girl named Paige, a woman named Paige, who mm -hmm. has a son. I think he's like 16, 17. Yeah, he's in his team. Um, and her Phineas father, yeah, his name is Phineas. And um, Paige's father, Edwin, has just been released from federal prison after 17 years. And so she kind of has to navigate life now and figure out how to navigate like her relationship with him and everything like that and it's, a, it's just a really 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 good show it is it's really good and like we said we're gonna try not to spoil it we're yeah. more so going off the themes yeah, yeah, yeah of the episode versus really spoiling it mm -hmm. but um basically what we picked up from, from it, each yeah. episode so what we did was we watched each episode together and then we each took like our own separate notes kind of basically like a class mm -hmm. and did like a case study basically. on each episode um <clears throat> and then at the end of each episode we talked about it with each other because we both can relate to a lot of the stuff that's in the show mm -hmm. and we wanted to bring it here yes Great. we had to fix the light and mm -hmm. get a couple things together real quick so. i have got a few points but the main thing i wanted to comment on that i really like took from this episode was um Paige not being able to really connect with her new relationship the person that she's in a relationship with um mm -hmm. because he was too much of a good guy and from that i took she was just too familiar with her chaos and her chaotic life and i think that that's really important to note because when you're a person that goes through like these traumatic things and you're go you're going through a lot of things it's almost like you get addicted to that trauma and you don't really know how to break it and it's like not addicted yeah it's not not addicted to the trauma in the sense that you love it there you probably hate the stuff that you're going through and you probably are wondering why this has always happened to me but it's like once you are presented with something good you don't really know what to do with it and it kind of scares you right and so you go back to what's comfortable and so i think that's what the case was for Paige. it's like she was leaving she you know didn't have a good relationship with her father she didn't have a good relationship with her mother either um her biological mother and then um 
that she got into a relationship that wasn't really a good relationship she loved it there quote unquote but it wasn't really like you know a good relationship and then she got into a new one that was he was a great guy um but she didn't know what to do with it and i think a lot of us whether you have daddy issues or not i think a lot of people can can relate to that the fact that you get into like these new healthy relationships and but you're so used to like the toxic one and the immature one and the childish one and you kind of don't know how to navigate it um so i just wrote down that page is too familiar with chaos and instability and that was her comfort zone mm -hmm. what'd you have for that episode um so basically we kind of wrote down a lot of similarities um like i put down in quotation trauma responses mm -hmm. so those that anxiety feeling that you may feel when you do have something good going on not necessarily just a relationship or anything in your life when things are going good and you get that feeling like oh my gosh what's gonna happen what's gonna happen yeah. or you're questioning everything it's your trauma response to things that you went through when you were younger so that's just your way of kind of dealing with it because you don't know it, it's almost like it's too good to be true and I, I kind of like related to that with her because I do that a lot like I question everything and I'd be like, oh my God, is this good? Or if something good's going on in my life, I'm almost like, what's, what's, about to what's next? Like, what's bad about to happen? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I also, um, I also spoke about how, oh yeah, I put she did not believe her father. And I found that so interesting because I'm the type of person where I need to know. Mm -hmm. Like, if I think somebody's lying to me, I'm going to find out if they're lying to me for sure or not to like i need to know i don't care what it is like i need to know to put my mind at ease yeah. and i'm like that's another trauma response like he told you what he told you you should have took his word for it but because of her trauma she had to know for mm -hmm. herself because it's almost like i can't allow this person to hurt me yeah. again so, so i'm kind of like prevent it before that happens right whole time that's not even their intention you just think it is kind exactly of. excuse me and then um I also um, took out how she has, he has, the father has a better relationship with her son mm -hmm. than he does with her. And I felt like that was just him right in his wrongs almost. Yeah. I think we see that a lot too. Again, I'm not a parent, but I feel like with grandparents, they'll if they didn't do well as a parent, they will be sometimes 100% better with your kids. Mm -hmm. It's like... They're trying to make up for what they didn't do when it came to you. So I feel like they do. Some parents might also do that, but like they're older and younger, like children. As yes. Well. Like if they didn't have the opportunity to treat their older kid right and do mm -hmm. right by their older child, they'll try to make up with it, make up for it with their younger kids. And it's like great for you, but like what about us? Right. What about me over here? And it's almost that like that too, like. I mean, when you're older sibling versus your younger siblings, you're like, what happened? Like, but when, for example, like my mom with me and my sister, she was younger. Mm -hmm. So it was like, she was growing up. Like my mom had my sister at 20 and me at like 24, 25. So that's young. That's really young when you think about yeah, it. Yeah. Like I don't have no kids. I couldn't imagine. Having a kid right now. Yeah. No. Cause I, then I know I would pass on certain things to them. Yeah. So, I feel like versus my <clears throat> younger siblings, they had my mother where she was kind of more established, mm -hmm. more like she Mature, knew herself she, yeah, more knew like. Herself. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It kind of made like not my mother did her best all the time, but when ver, kids that grow up with their parents versus kids that have their parents when they're more established is definitely a difference. Mm -hmm. Mentally, not even just established money-wise, just mentally, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a difference. Another thing I do want to note though, that in the show, guys, this is one, one of my favorite parts of the show. So Paige is an older woman, not not old, but she's an it's adult. Like 40s. Yeah, maybe like late 30s, 40s. Yeah. And then, but throughout the show, the pers her perspective switches from older her to younger her. I think her that's inner so, child. I think that was so genius. Yes. And when I tell y'all the first episode, okay, so you know what's funny? Brie almost did, we almost didn't watch it because you thought mm -hmm. it was a movie. Yeah. And she was like, I'm not, I'm not watching this. I thought it was a movie. It's a show. And then <laughs> she texted, she texted me. She was like, No, you have to watch this. <laughs> I was like, Okay. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll watch it if I remember because I think I was at work or something. But anyway. So I'm laying down and watching the show. Boom! Like I said, her father has just gotten in prison. Got, I was just like, gotten it's out of prison. triggering. 
I was like, Ooh, be careful. It's very triggering. Very triggering. So when um he gets out and he comes, she comes to pick him up. They switch scenes from when she was little in the prison visiting him, and I was like, whoa, let's let's pause real quick. Let's take a second because I'm triggered. <laughs> like that was crazy, but I think that that, that go big. Literally, I feel what like the trigger. <laughs> You know you can't do Janae around me. <laughs> I don't know why I started, but um yeah, I feel like I had a big note of that because I had that up here, and I feel like that was literally that was genius because so much of our trauma is rooted in our inner child, and mm -hmm. we carry that trauma on because we don't know how to heal our inner child, but we literally carry our inner child with us all the, till the day we die. Like that's always going to be a part of us. Mm -hmm. We'll get more into that too. Yeah. Okay, so the next episode we watched, I don't really have a lot up here. It's kind of similar from what I wrote in the previous episode. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I did like from this episode that I wrote down was at the end of the episode, she kept saying, I want to be free. Um, <clears throat> and, excuse me, I feel like that sentence alone was so powerful to me. Simply because, like I said, so you, we get addicted to this trauma, we get familiar with this trauma, and then as you get older it kind of becomes like your identity in a sense it kind of right. becomes who you are some people use it as a crutch and so by her like saying over and over almost like repeating it herself as like a mantra or an affirmation i want to be free to me i took that as i want to be free of this trauma i want to be free of this these shackles that's holding me down from being the person that i know i can be so i really really like that part about that episode i had um I had a few different things down. I'm going to leave some things out because I want that to be an entire separate episode. Yeah. So one thing I did have down was people pleasing. Mm -hmm. And it was a scene. I'm not going to go into it because I want you guys to watch it. But it was a scene where someone was telling her about something. About some, like someone basically not doing what they said they were going to do. And Paige offered her like, oh, I'll do it. But you could tell she didn't, didn't deep to. down, she didn't really want to do it. But because she knew that was going to make <clears throat> that person happy, she did it anyway. So it almost was like, if I do this for her, it's going to make her happy and she's going to like me even more. So mm -hmm. she's just people pleasing to get that feeling of being loved almost. Yeah. Like she just wanted, she likes to feel love because she lacked that when she was a kid. So anytime anybody gives her that little bit of feeling... Even if it means I got a people please to get that, it fulfills her in some mm -hmm. way. So I feel like a lot of times I do that too. Um, I'll people please. Like I know I don't want to do this. Or I don't want to go somewhere. I don't want to go somewhere. But if I'm not there, people going to be mad at me. Or if I'm not there, people going to be upset. So let me just go mm -hmm. because then they're, they're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. I'm learning now as I'm going through my healing <clears throat> and everything like that to not people please so much because it drains you yeah for it sure absolutely drains you when you do things that you don't want to do that drains you because now you're at that event you don't want to be there mm -hmm. you don't want to be there you have an attitude you, you're thinking about what you're about to watch when you go home mm -hmm. you're thinking about the shower you're about to take when you get home you are irritated mm -hmm. so why do something that is not beneficial to you right that nobody's emotions mental state matters more than yours and another thing um she was looking at old photos of her ex in the mm -hmm. episode and it switches back to her inner self yeah, and yeah her child inner self comes over with ice cream and just they just have it like mm -hmm. just comfort and i'm like I felt like during that time when she was a kid, she needed that type of comfort. Mm -hmm. And now she's being that person for, for herself. herself. This next episode that we watched was really, really good. I mean, they all were good. They all but were. But this one was really good. So the first thing I have is something that, like she said, I want to talk about in a separate episode. So I'll keep that out. Because um, it's like a completely separate topic. Um. So like we said, Paige... Um, she has like moments where her inner child comes out and talks to the camera or whatever but in this episode you see her father's inner child and i think that was really really big so right now i have down um edwin's inner child sometimes adults are only capable of operating from a younger version of themselves um he sort of shut down when he was asked about his childhood um 
you can see like a lot of the effects of the generational trauma that was there um and so let me let me stop right there so with his inner child coming out and i like what i have here that like adults are sometimes only op capable of operating from a younger version of themselves one thing that my mother and my tt always tell me is that it's possible that my father can only operate from a younger version of himself mm -hmm. um and that's something that i kind of like just listen to and i don't really take for what it's worth like i don't really not that i don't understand it because i get it but i don't get it like mm -hmm. it, i don't know it's, it's, it's hard to explain but seeing that in the show it was like hmm like looking at it from the outside looking in rather than me me being in my own shoes being able to look at it from a different perspective and like an outsider in a sense kind of like really put it into perspective it's like mm -hmm. okay I guess. This I guess you're right. right. I guess you're right. <laughs> Do y'all know that TikTok when, she, when they like, you're not that beer or nothing, but that one little thing, you you ate that one thing. You're not that bitch or nothing, but yeah. you still yeah. ate that little one, yeah. that little yeah. one yeah. thing, yeah. ate that one thing. Y'all yeah. ate that. Y'all yeah. ate that because y'all was right. Y'all was right. <laughs> I, I admit it, I guess. And I feel like for you, this it was so triggering too because you, your father actually was in jail. Yeah. Like, this whole storyline is really something similar to what to you my life <laughs> granted it wasn't like the the amount of time for, yeah but still but he was, was in for a for minute a, for a, a while. long time yeah whereas for me my father wasn't in jail he was out but he wasn't there at all mm -hmm. so i mean so it kind of still i still was able to relate to it because um you know she was trying to figure out how to have a relationship again with her father mm -hmm. so i feel like that's where i'm at in my life like do i or do i not like yeah. do i just shut this down do i like so seeing her trying i'm like i gotta do that i get like really that's what i had for real for real i really gotta do that <laughs> Like, I don't feel like doing that. I no, but, like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then I also had down, I think it was Paige that said this. Oh, I think I had a lot for this episode. Oh my gosh, I forgot. I went on to the next page. Yeah, this was a very okay. good episode. So, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it brief. So, the next thing I had was if you keep pretending you have no traumas, it'll keep coming out sideways. So, I think in that moment, I think Paige said that. And mm -hmm. um, it was just because Edwin, he keeps trying to ignore everything that he went through rather than facing it. Head on. Um, let's see, going back to like adults only being able to operate from a younger version of themselves, I have down that he's really, he's just that same scared little boy from his hometown when he was going through his own traumas from his childhood. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, you don't ever really get past your trauma, you sort of just carry it forward in a different way. I think that was really, I think that was a, a pretty, pretty good statement to make, um, a pretty, what is the word I'm looking for? Like... A pretty valid statement to make i feel like yes we can heal from our traumas but it's always going to be there like it's always going to be in your mind it's always going to be something that you that you went through you just have to figure out now how to live with it right. and don't let it like you know what i mean y'all yeah, know what i mean honestly we have a lot of this um similar things mm -hmm. and i don't want to get into some of mine either because i feel like that's a whole nother episode um but i also had down that dad didn't want to speak about his childhood traumas which jordan touched on already and he said something like you have to laugh at the pain mm -hmm. yeah that was that was heavy and i feel like we all do that far too often like i was saying to jordan as we was watching it i'm like we do that all the time we always crack jokes about our um daddy issues, daddy issues. Okay, and, make a joke. yeah we crack jokes all the time like or if we see a funny meme we'd be like this us like that's Literally. not funny <laughs> Like, girl, you're hurting. Right, you're hurt. Like, and I feel like we do that too much. Like, instead of actually facing it and dealing with it, we just laugh it off. Mm -hmm. Like, that, no, it's not funny. Like, it, it, I feel like you can laugh at it once you heal from it. If you haven't healed from it, if it's still affecting you. What did you laugh at? Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> what What's funny? That's not funny. So, I feel like we need to work on... That's almost like masking it. You want to put yeah. it. You just want to put on the front like it's not bothering you. Almost mm -hmm. when you but know deep down like it is bothering you, and you do need to fix that. Yeah. Um. And I put passing traumas down. 
generational, generational cursing. Yeah. Because it's funny, the dad is running away from his childhood drama. And Paige is now trying to work on it. But it's a lot of things that she still also runs from mm -hmm. instead of facing it head on. So her father probably didn't realize that you're just passing this down. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep going until somebody decides to break that generational curse. Mm -hmm. And that's for all families, anybody. Until one person decides to break it, it's going to continue to keep going. Absolutely. So if you're that person, start the work. Do what you have to do to face your childhood traumas. And I'm still working towards it. I am no, no I, I don't have it all together. But I am working towards it because I learned that these things have been affecting me big time in all different type of relationships in my life. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to fix that so that I don't give that to my children when I do have children. I do want to say though, like as y'all watch this and as y'all hear us talk, don't think that we got it all together. Yeah. By her saying like we don't have it all together, that really made me think like, we are figuring this out just as much as y'all figuring it out. Right. Okay, we we're all in this together. Okay, we don't know. And we see this. <laughs> we we listen. Half the time we don't know what we doing. We just figuring it out. Honestly, honestly like honestly, don't we? This is part of therapy for us. Yes. Almost. having girls garden. We started girls garden at a point where we both started our healing journey mm -hmm. when we were like something's gonna change something's gotta change we were living fast like yeah every weekend we, we was, was out outside i'm sure we told you guys this in the last season but like no for the ones that's just coming on we, we were, were outside. outside every weekend day not every day, but during the week. Yes, whenever we got the chance. Whenever we got the chance, we was outside, we was outside drinking. Just not that it's anything wrong with drinking, but you gotta know your limits. We was like not knowing our limits. We was ODing for no, not for even no reason. for no reason. But the reason was we was hurting. Right. And we didn't know how else. We didn't want to face it. We didn't want to be laying in the bed with light off, thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather be outside. Mm hmm. Hopping out at red lights, twerking on the headlights. And that's what we was doing. I'm not saying you can't have a night every now and then. Have right. your nights. But that's what I was doing. That's what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it was weird. We kind of both like just got to a point where we're like, all right. Yeah. This is this is enough is enough. And so. a lot of things happened back to back for both of us. Like different relationships, mm -hmm. different things. And it was just like, all right. Yeah, we gotta pause. We gotta put we gotta yeah. So no, we do not have it all together, and it's okay not to have it all together. It's okay to not be okay, right? Period. But start somewhere. And period. So um, here at Girls Garden. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next episode. Um, let's see. So this one starts. I was gonna say starts getting good, but it, the whole thing is good. Um. I would say that in this episode that we're on now, I would say Paige starts to sort of open up a little bit more and you can see it and you can see that she's trying. It's a little bit uncomfortable for her and which is natural because it's like you barely know this man, honestly. Right. It's like he's a stranger to you, um, which is how I feel sometimes. And so it's uncomfortable and it's hard to sort of start this relationship all from scratch basically right. but you can see that she tries a lot in this episode which i really liked um one thing that made me sad was um so we talked about Paige's comfort zone edwin has a comfort zone too and so as much as in the beginning he tried to get away from that chaos that he was used to it's like he starts like low-key falling back into his chaotic traumatic ways in a sense but I feel like, I don't know if you noticed this, but I feel like from Jump, he was always attached to his mm -hmm. chaotic ways, like, with, like, his women and everything mm -hmm. like that, so. But, yeah, this this is where, like, I don't want to do too much spoiling. Yeah. Don't want to get too much into it. Um, you have anything from this episode? Yeah, he said something, like, she let me in, speaking about Paige, his daughter. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was big, because when you do watch it, what you will see is his whole point is to work things out with his daughter to right mm -hmm. his wrongs and at that moment he felt like I'm finally getting somewhere like she's letting me in 
um also people from her past decided started to come back and her father said one thing to her that i thought was really deep um and he y'all gonna see throughout the show he be he be dropping gems. Yes. Low key. Really dropping gems. I'm like, mm-mm. Well, okay, Delroy. Calm so, down. So, he says, sometimes all we're doing is rearranging the boxes. What he meant by that is, like, we may be dealing with different people, but the things we're looking for in those people are not changing. They're just being rearranged. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to spoil it. So, I'm going to, it's like, she was dealing with one type of man, and he wasn't that good. He wasn't good. So, she started dealing with a whole different okay. type of guy but her things that she had in place for those people it was like yeah he had he was better but she was just moving things around instead of actually saying okay this is not working this is not working mm -hmm. let me not look for this in a man let me yeah, not look for yeah, this yeah. so that's what he meant by sometimes we're all we're doing is rearranging the boxes and i thought that was big because i feel like i do that a lot I don't actually look, I just rearrange stuff and then I get the same outcome. So let's see, let's see. Oh, this is, this is hard. We both have this. We need okay. to say it because we have that on the same, the first thing. The first one? Oh, that, I think that's the only thing I'm going to share. I yeah. think the rest of it I can't. So the, um, one more thing from the, other, the next episode, uh, Paige said, what do you owe a parent whose best isn't good enough? Mm. And that one hit me in my core. Me too. That one hit me real, real deep because um, when I have these conversations about my father with like Bree and with my mom or with Titi or with whoever, um, and we talk about how he may have been operating. Yes, Titi is her mom. <laughs> yeah, probably like, who is Titi? <laughs> um, when we talk about uh, when I talk about him and we talk about how he may have just been operating from a younger version of himself because that's the only that's all he knows and he was doing his best and I have said well his maybe his best just wasn't good enough mm -hmm. um and I don't know that that sentence it just was like ooh, what a gut punch I was like right. dang girl I felt that even right now I still don't know the answer to that sentence oh like, yeah it's gonna always stick with me but I don't know the answer to that what do you owe a parent whose best wasn't good enough because mm -hmm. that's how I feel mm -hmm. what do I I don't owe you yeah anything anything but at the same time, it's like, that's your parent, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, But then at the same same time, it's like, it's like but you're the parent. Right, so why do and I, I'm your child. <laughs> no matter how old I get, I'm still the child. There was one, one other thing that I'm going to say. We need to talk to our inner self when we feel worked up. Mm -hmm. And we need to be there for our inner child. Yeah. When you feel worked up, Paige talked to her inner self. It was mm -hmm. pl plenty of times her younger self started acting up and she was like no yeah, yeah. wait mm -hmm. no and i think that that's what i'm gonna start doing a lot of times when i start because i have like i get defensive i get worked up i like things like that start arguing and stuff i'm gonna start talking to myself and be like that's your younger self coming out mm -hmm. calm down let's revisit i think that's very important for everyone if you know what how you're like she shuts down yeah i'm gonna say correct that. me if i'm wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i was gonna say that like, Jordan shuts down. So, I think what Jordan might need to do when she shuts down, like, no, I'm not going to shut down. I'm going to explain this mm -hmm. and how it's hurting me and, and what I need to do to fix yeah. it. So, I think everyone, that should be, I think you know what? Comment below what you feel like you need to tell your inner self. There you go. Inner Ooh, self. What do you good, feel like good. you need to tell her or him? Yes. What is it that you need to tell them? When they start acting up, what you need to pop them for? Right. Because you need to pop them sometime. I do. But I think overall the gist of the show for me is just hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. Um, and it's so important to get yourself together before you start hurting all these other people, all these yes. other innocent people. Um, because it's not fair to everybody else that you're hurting them all because you didn't want to, you know, get your shit together. Right. And I feel like for me, what I took from the show too, hurt people, hurt people, and also... I kind of just want to be a better person first before because I used to always be like oh, I just want kids I want kids I want a family I want mm -hmm. a husband I want this I want that but now I feel like I just want to be I feel like maybe that's why it's on hold because God will make me a, a mm -hmm. different person before I even he still gotta be work that you. yeah like I don't want to bring a kid into this world the way I am right now mm -hmm. like I want to work on myself first so that my kid can have 
a clean sleep mm -hmm. and don't have to have my trash. Period. So, I need y'all to watch this. I we need y'all to, to watch this. this. Yes. Um, Delroy, Carrie, uh, Washington, and everybody at Hulu, we need a season two. We need a... We need a I season need a two. Season two. Hulu, stop playing. Stop playing with me. Each Let episode, we stopped. We talked about what we written down, and we kept going. It was so therapeutic for us. Like, I can't wait till we find the next show that we're going to do this I with. I swear, that was so good. One more thing lie. before we go. What seeds have you planted today? Yes. Today. So, at the end of each episode from here on out, we have decided that we're going to ask um, each other a question mm -hmm. the same way. Shout out, no, for sure. Shout out, be Simone. Shout out, Megan. Actually, we they inspire us. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all know we are their, their little sisters. Period. Um, I know y'all seen them watch our story. <laughs> we're literally <laughs> going to be on the show. I, I'll get into it later. Yeah. Anyway, so at the end of each of their episodes, they ask them, each other and their guests, what do you know for sure and what are you saying no, no to, to for sure? sure. So, being that we are the girls' garden, mm -hmm. and garden, seeds, hello. Get it? Duh. Duh. <laughs> Anyways. So, the question is, what seeds have you planted today? today? So, after the after this conversation, what seeds are you going to plant, I think, in your life and into your daily routine or whatever the case may be um, to sort of just better yourself, better the person that you are, sort of reach the person that you want to become? What seeds have you planted today? I kind of shared support. it before sorry yeah, okay. sorry guys but i feel like that's some of the seeds that i have planted today i am going to definitely have a better relationship actually this is different better relationship with my mm, inner child that's good i want a better relationship with her because i feel like i have not been there for her mm -hmm. and she needs me yeah she needs me bad and i feel like that's why we we're so not on one accord yeah that my life just be like Ooh, oh, because please. me and her are not on one accord mm -hmm. so uh -huh. i want to have a better relationship with her and acknowledge her more and i feel like once i do that things will definitely get better yeah what seeds have you planted um, today you know so what's funny i had two seeds and one of my seeds was uh you know getting you know acknowledging my inner child more but unfortunately i forgot my other seed <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, but I do like your seed. So okay. I'm going to steal your seed. That's fine. And I'm going to say you guys that. You steal it too. Yes. Everybody steal the seed. Steal the seed. And it's not even stealing. It no, is, we got enough seeds. We're feeding off we of each other. Seeds. We yes. are pouring into each other's cups. And yes. You know, we're, we pour into we you. We help our, each other's us. gardens grow. Period. This is where the garden, wait. This, this is, is where, where the, the girls, girls grow. grow. <laughs> the girls and the guys. The girls and the guys. Because we got our guys. Our guys. I got the. I be seeing ya. I be seeing ya. I be seeing ya. Yeah, I low. It's okay. I'll let y'all stay low. Keep going. I mean. Um, but yeah, that'll be my seed. Um, healing my inner child and letting her heal me as well. Mm -hmm. You know, just like she said, getting on one accord with my inner child. Mm -hmm. Because that is important. And when they acting up, you gotta talk to them. Like, uh -uh. stop it. You have to talk to the teeth. Stop. But yes, please, if you haven't, watch Unprison. Yes. You will love it. We love you guys. We are looking forward to season two. We're so excited. We're going to bring some people on this show. Yes, we have so much fun. So much. Not this show. This podcast. I, I, we're just excited. We're like, so, so much planned. So, so much planned. Y'all going to be like, what? Like, yeah. I hope y'all ready. I really hope y'all ready. And if y'all not, y'all better get ready. Buckle up. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.